Star Trek The Next Generation. It's not only one of my favorite TV shows of all time, it is one of the best science fiction TV shows of all time. And so many times over the years, people have asked me, Dan, I want to watch Star Trek The Next Generation, but I don't know where to start. What are the best episodes? Well, I decided to finally sit down and come up with my list of the essential episodes for you to enjoy Star Trek The Next Generation from beginning to end. So I've taken 178 episodes and whittled it down to 57, and I know that sounds like a lot, 57 episodes, but you you know what? Maybe skip that next rewatch of Breaking Bad and enjoy one of the best sci-fi TV shows of all time from beginning to end. Engage. Let's start with season one of Star Trek The Next Generation, and of course you have to start with the pilot episode, Encounter at Farpoint. Star Trek The Next Generation's pilot introduces everything you need to know, from the characters, to the themes of the show, to the big bad, if you want to call him that, Q. Either leave or finish us! Tempo, tempo, mon capitain. I'm merely trying to assist a pitiful species. The pilot episode of Star Trek The Next Generation is essential viewing, even if a lot of it is Counselor Troy just kind of smiling and talking about feelings. A feeling of great joy. And gratitude. Great joy. And gratitude. Next up is an episode called The Naked Now, which is a de facto remake of an original series episode called The Naked Time. The entire crew going out of control. Like intoxication, but worse. Now, the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation doesn't have a whole lot of standout episodes, but I picked this one because it is a great callback to the original series and because it's actually a pretty funny episode. There must be a cure, some formula. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a little cheesy and a little cornball and a little more 60s sci-fi than the rest of the show would go, but you have a lot of great character moments. You have the setup of the relationship between Data and Tasha Yar. You are fully functional, aren't you? Of course, but... How fully? In every way, of course. I am programmed in multiple techniques. And you know, the next generation gets dinged a little bit for not being as fun as the original series or as fun as most of the other shows, but there are a few fun episodes, and this is one of them. The next episode I picked is the second encounter that the crew has with Q. It's an episode called Hyde and Q. And yes, it does have some pretty cheesy touches, including the pig face soldiers. But it continues to establish the fact that Q is a trickster who likes to test the crew of the Enterprise, and you get some good character development. You see Riker's arrogance. You see Geordi struggle with being blind and his desire to live a different life. It establishes a lot of character beats, as well as continuing to establish who Q is and the challenge that he will bring the Enterprise for years to come. One of the Star Trek hallmarks that The Next Generation established was the Holodeck episode. And another episode from season one that I'm picking is The Big Goodbye, which was the series' first big Holodeck episode and establishes Captain Picard's love for the hard-boiled detective character Dixon Hill. Plus, it's a Star Trek B story about diplomacy and a diplomatic timeline. We're running out of time. The Harada will expect the captain's greeting. Well, you may have to stall him. What could be more Star Trek than that? Next is an episode called Data Lore, which establishes Data's evil twin brother, Lore. And yes, the evil twin does sound kind of cheesy, but they go to some interesting directions with this relationship in the future. It is a good backstory episode for Data, and it shows how Brent Spiner can stretch and really do a bunch of different things as an actor. And you want to be as stupid as them, dear brother? The next episode is an episode called Coming of Age, which is largely about Wesley Crusher taking the entrance exam to get into Starfleet Academy. There aren't a whole lot of great Wesley episodes. Uh, this one is actually not so bad. A man could have died. You had to make a choice, and you did. There's no right or wrong about it. Your greatest fear has been that you couldn't make that decision. Also in the background, there's the establishment of a storyline that's going to wrap up later in the season of an evil conspiracy taking over Starfleet. I don't know whether the threat comes from the inside or whether it's from outside. Next, we have Skin of Evil, a.k.a. the one with the big goo tar monster. And this probably wouldn't make the list except for the fact that it has a seismic event inside of it, which is the death of Tasha Yar. She's dead. So while this is a very cheesy planet and a very cheesy villain, the death of Tasha is something that continues throughout the series. I keep thinking how empty it will be without her presence. 
I mentioned that in Coming of Age, they set up a Starfleet conspiracy. That is paid off in an episode called Conspiracy. It's a real gross-out episode for TNG, and it's actually maybe the closest or one of the closest that it gets to horror, particularly body horror. They're really pushing some boundaries in this episode. <laughs> I like the effects of this episode, and it shows the different kinds of things that TNG can do. The final episode from season one that I'm recommending is one called The Neutral Zone. There's an A storyline about some 20th century folks getting unfrozen and learning modern times on the Enterprise. It's fine, but really what you need to know the most is that it, number one, reestablishes the Romulans, who at this time in the series had been gone for quite some time, and it subtly establishes the Borg, who we will meet next season as the Enterprise is investigating these outposts that have mysteriously disappeared. There is nothing left of Outpost Delta-05. Now we move on to Season 2, which also doesn't have a whole lot of standout episodes, but the ones that do are actually pretty good. The first one that I'm recommending is Elementary Dear Data. It's a great Geordi Data episode that establishes their friendship. It's also one of the few good Dr. Pulaski episodes. There was a replacement doctor brought in for Season 2 to replace Dr. Crusher called Dr. Pulaski. They didn't do a whole lot with that character, but this is an episode that actually uses her in a fun way as opposed to just a stern sickbay doctor. Will that be sufficient, doctor? We'll see. And as I mentioned, the holodeck episode is a hallmark of the next generation and of Data's fascination with humanity and with what people do. Next up is a matter of honor, and there are several good Klingon episodes, which we'll talk about in the next generation. On this one, Riker does an exchange with a Klingon officer and serves aboard a Klingon ship, and it really does establish the world of the Klingons. It also involves a little bit of gamesmanship, which is something that Riker is great at. Uh, so just a solid Riker slash Klingon episode from season two. The Measure of a Man is a key Star Trek episode across all franchises and really drills to the heart of what so much of this franchise is about and why it's been special to so many people for so long. It involves Starfleet wanting to essentially take control of Data, disassemble him, and figure out how to replicate him to create an army of synthetic life forms and whether Data has the right to allow those tests to happen. Captain Lavoie has issued a ruling. You are the property of Starfleet Command. You cannot resign. The measure of a man, uh, even apart from this list, is one of the essential episodes of Star Trek in any series. Another essential episode for this one is Q Who, and this episode starts out as another classical Q adventure where Picard says that they're ready to face any challenge, and Q snaps them to the other side of the galaxy, but what they meet is more important than the Q element, which is the Borg. It's the first time that we actually see the foes that would define this series and would largely define the character of Captain Picard. They will be coming. You can bet on it. The Borg really are a linchpin uh, upon which the whole franchise turns, and they start right here in this episode. Next up is a very light episode called Manhunt. This is, I think, the essential episode to feature Troy's mother, Loxana Troy, who is played by Majel Barrett Roddenberry. In addition to being a great Loxana Troy episode, it's just one of the series' funniest episodes. I'm sure Mrs. Troy would love to hear the one about the anomalous chemical composition of um, brown dwarf stars. Not really. It's one that I continue to laugh at every time I rewatch the series. The final episode from season two I'm recommending is one called The Emissary, which sets up some important character stuff for Lieutenant Worf. It also introduces Kalar, who will return some very significant ramifications that will be revisited later down the line. Now we move on to season three, which is generally where people acknowledge that the show begins to hit its peak. And the first episode I'm recommending is one called The Enemy, which involves Geordi and a Romulan being trapped together on a planet and forced to rely on each other for survival. I will be your eyes. I love these episodes that are able to take characters and put them in situations where uh, you, you test these biases, you test these prejudices and these rivalries. There's also a great B story where there's a Romulan on board that that needs a blood transfusion, and Worf is the only one on board that can help with that. I would rather die than pollute my body with Klingon filth. 
his split allegiance between what he believes is right as a Klingon and what he believes is right as a Starfleet officer is a very interesting push and pull throughout the episode. Next up is another Q episode called Deja Q, where Q shows up on board and he's lost his powers and has to learn to adjust uh, to living as a human. It's a funny episode. And we talk about great Brent Spiner moments. Data breaking into hysterics as a parting gift from Q is an all-time Data moment that can't be missed. <laughs> Data. Yesterday's Enterprise is a landmark Star Trek The Next Generation episode and continues the series' ability to pull off great time travel episodes. When a previous version of the Enterprise comes through a time rift, we are shifted into an alternate dimension where the Federation is in a never-ending war with the Klingon Empire, and we also see the return of Tasha Yar. Tasha, you're not supposed to be here. Where am I supposed to be? Dead. And this sets up some very interesting future characters slash paradox stuff for later on in the series. So even though this is a one-off as far as going to this timeline, this does have ramifications for what happens to characters down the road. Let's make sure that history never forgets the name Enterprise. One of the most bittersweet episodes of The Next Generation is The Offspring, where Data decides to build a daughter for himself named Lol. If you'd kept Data in the same place throughout the series, he could have been a very boring character. Shows like The Offspring are great models for how to take a character who is in many ways constrained by what he can do and continue to make that character interesting. Next is an episode called Sins of the Father, which is a critical wharf episode. The Klingon High Council has judged our father a traitor to the Empire. Worf's father is branded a traitor, and he must return to the Klingon Empire to answer for those crimes. Plus, Captain Picard is a lawyer. He's like Michael Bluth. He just loves playing lawyer. It is the rules of the Makba that evidence be presented in open council. You're a crook, Captain Hook. Judge, won't you throw the book? The, the Next Generation avoided tying itself too much to the original series, but one that does and does so beautifully is Sarek, which features the character of Sarek, who is Spock's father. And you see him in a position of real vulnerability as he's beginning to age, to deteriorate, and to lose control of his emotions. Patrick Stewart is a Shakespearean actor, and he's always solid in the show. But the scene where Sarek transfers his emotions to Picard, this is a key Patrick Stewart scene. It shows just what caliber of actor they have in that role. I'm so old, there is nothing left but dry bones, dead friends. It really is a great character beat uh, and a great setup for later on in the series. We shall always retain the best part of the other. I believe I have the better part of that bargain, Ambassador. Next up is a two-parter that tops pretty much everyone's list of must-watch Star Trek The Next Generation episodes. The Best of Both Worlds Part 1, which was the Season 3 finale, and The Best of Both Worlds Part 2, which was the Season 4 premiere. This is the one where Captain Picard is abducted and becomes a member of the Borg Collective. I am Locutus of Borg. Resistance is futile. This one incident is what shapes Captain Picard and really gives him some depth of character. We will revisit what happens to him in this episode throughout the series. We will revisit it in Star Trek First Contact. It's the best of everything Star Trek The Next Generation can be in two episodes. The episode that follows both of these, however, is essentially the third part in what I think is a trilogy of episodes, and this one is called Family. The Enterprise is docked, undergoing repairs, and we visit a bunch of the characters as they take advantage of this opportunity to meet with their families. We see Worf and his adopted family. We see Wesley and Dr. Crusher going through their tragic past with Wesley's father, who was killed under Captain Picard's command. But most critically, we revisit Captain Picard as he visits his brother Robert. This is where we first start to visit the guilt that Captain Picard will carry with him throughout the rest of his life. He used me to kill and to destroy and I couldn't stop them. They don't skirt over this. They don't pretend it didn't happen. And this episode is acted so beautifully by Patrick Stewart as he first tries to hide and then learns to embrace what this has done to him. Speaking of family, Lore returns in another episode called Brothers where he meets his father, Noonien Soong 
who has brought both androids to the planet, essentially against their will. This is also the introduction of the emotion chip that will later allow Data to feel emotions in Star Trek Generations. This is a three-way role uh, for Brent Spiner. He gets to play Data, he gets to play his own brother, and he gets to play his own father. It's a real acting showcase and again shows the range of a really talented performer. One of my favorite episodes is one called Remember Me, which is a great sci-fi premise. People start disappearing from the Enterprise one by one, and Dr. Crusher finds that she is the only one who remembers that they even existed. You're telling me I'm the sole medical officer on a ship with over a thousand people on board. Excuse me, Doctor. But the entire ship's complement is 230. I love the sci-fi-ness of this episode and the fact that it, it, it keys into Dr. Crusher. Loss has always been a very key part of her character. This explores that very fully. Remember Me is maybe in my top 10 of Star Trek The Next Generation episodes and a must-watch for the series as a whole. Kalar returns and we meet Worf's son Alexander in Reunion, which further goes deep into the Klingon Civil War storyline. This is a runner that'll be for the next few seasons and feeding into Star Trek Generations as well. This is such an important episode for Worf's character development. The character of Alexander uh, is largely a non-entity throughout most of TNG, but it does set up this conflict as family man now uh, and officer, as Klingon and human. So much inner turmoil with Worf and it continues to to develop throughout this episode. Final Mission is another one of the very few good Wesley Crusher episodes. Wesley is on his way to Starfleet Academy. He and Captain Picard are involved in a shuttle crash, and Wesley must help the captain survive until rescue can come. Is it essential to the story? Not really, but it's a great character episode, and I think those are important to include as well to get a full understanding of how well this series developed its characters over time. Wesley, you will be missed. Data's Day is maybe the most essential Data episode of the whole series, also one of the funniest episodes of the series. We just see what the day-to-day -day life on the Enterprise is like for Data. It introduces us to the Dancing Doctor, which makes use of Gates McFadden's really good talent for dancing. She was the choreographer for Labyrinth. Did you know that? But otherwise, it's just a great development of Data, a lot of humor to be had, a lighter episode and a lighter moment for Star Trek The Next Generation, which it needs from time to time. The drumhead is an entry in another great thing that Star Trek does really well, which is the authority figure who's obsessed. Here we have a Starfleet Admiral who's conducting an inquiry as to a sabotage incident on the Enterprise. And this is a great meeting of the minds between Picard, who knows what's right, and the authority of Starfleet, who's telling him to enforce something that he knows is wrong. I'm going to get to the heart of this conspiracy if it means investigating every last person on this ship. What you're doing here is unethical. It's immoral. I'll fight it. And again, it's something that Star Trek does right. They make things like court martials and hearings a gripping television. It's almost like a courtroom drama, uh, and this is one of the best. Redemption Part 1 and Redemption Part 2 see Worf leaving Starfleet to serve in the Klingon Empire. And this brings to a close pretty much what's been developing for Worf since Sins of the Father. We are Klingons. He is our leader. If that is not enough for you, then perhaps you made the wrong choice when you put on that uniform. This is one of the key Worf episodes and just a really good Klingon episode. And that's something that TNG specialized in was a lot of really strong episodes about the Klingons. It's really where they became more fleshed out than they were in the movies in the original series, which was kind of a very one-dimensional picture of the entire species. Darmok is heady Trek at its best. Darmok and Gillard at Tanagra. Captain Picard is trapped on a planet with an alien who does not speak his language, and they have to figure out how to bond and communicate with each other. And it is about basically finding this common language, which is based in metaphor and history that Captain Picard doesn't know, and these two people finding an understanding, which is what a lot of Star Trek is about. How do you find understanding in space between two alien species that don't know each other? This is a great episode in that vein, and is a great Captain Picard episode as well. Another good Captain Picard episode is one called Disaster, which splits the crew up when a space anomaly hits the Enterprise and Captain Picard is stranded with a group of kids, which is pretty much his worst nightmare, as we've established that Captain Picard is not a big fan of children. I want you all to stop crying. Everything is going to be all right. 
I also like that Counselor Troy features heavily in this episode, and a lot of times in Counselor Troy-centric episodes, they put her in a position of weakness, where she's impregnated by an alien, has to have a child, or she loses her powers, or her mind is invaded. This is an episode where they put her in a position of power, where she struggles with the weight of command. I believe there are still people alive down there, and I'm going to give them every chance. So this is also where the show begins to treat Counselor Troy a little bit better and make her character stronger. Another great sci-fi premise is the episode The Game, which sees Wesley Crusher returning to the ship just in time to fight off the rest of the crew who become addicted to a game that's brought back from the pleasure planet Risa by Commander Riker of course. It's similar to Remember Me, where the world is turning against you, where you have to avoid your friends and family who have suddenly become enemies. These are very effective psychological scary things that the show uses really, really well. We are reintroduced to the character of Spock in Unification Part 1 and Unification Part 2, where Picard and Data go undercover into the Romulan Empire to track down Spock, who has essentially gone rogue, but as it turns out, is looking to unify the Romulan and Vulcan peoples. It would seem unlikely to succeed, but I cannot ignore the potential rewards that a union between our two worlds would bring. With the death of Sarek, the bond between Picard and Spock, it's a very touching moment for Picard to give Spock this gift of knowing his father's real feelings for him. You may know Sarek better than his own son does. I offer you the chance to touch what he shared with me. You also have some action. And Sela, the half Romulan, half human child of the Tasha Yar that went back in time. I thought this was a really interesting way to reintroduce a character, reintroduce an actor back into the show in an unexpected way. Next up is Ethics, which is one of the big moral quandary episodes. Worf is critically injured in an accident and asks Commander Riker to kill him. When a Klingon can no longer stand and face his enemies as a warrior, when he becomes a burden to his friends and family, it is time for the head bar. Time for him to die. The debate between these whole issues is enough to justify the cop-out ending with the magical backup Klingon nervous system that essentially undoes everything that happens in this episode. That almost had me uh, not put this episode on, but it is such a great debate that I really think that it is, is key to understanding what Star Trek was able to do as it tackled social issues of its time. Speaking of being ahead of its time, the episode The Outcast takes on both gender identity and sexual identity, topics that were not really up for debate, especially on mainstream television shows in the early 90s. Riker and the Enterprise visit a planet with aliens who are essentially told that they are genderless. I have had to live a life of pretense and lies, but with you I can be honest. Again, TNG is really tackling an issue that was way ahead of its time, and Star Trek was able to do this a lot. By hiding it under an alien race, they could address really hot-button topics that on their own might not even get past network censors. I am female. I was born that way. I am not sick because I feel this way. I do not need to be helped. I do not need to be cured. The Outcast is actually more relevant now than when it was made because it's addressing issues that are just now, or at least in the past few years, getting widespread public discourse and being tackled by big government agencies. What makes you think you can dictate how people love each other? When people ask me what my favorite episode of Star Trek The Next Generation is, a lot of times this is the episode that I'm going to cite. It's one called Cause and Effect. The Enterprise is caught in a time loop. Basically, it ends every time with the Enterprise being destroyed. The ship explodes, then events reset, and we watch the crew as they try to communicate messages to themselves to avoid this catastrophe. You think we sent ourselves a message? It would make sense. Maybe we are trying to tell ourselves something. I love how they're able to restage the same scenes over and over and over again in a way that doesn't get boring. You're going to call my bluff, aren't you? Plus, it has a surprise Kelsey Grammer cameo at the end, and what Star Trek series is complete without a surprise Frasier? We revisit Wesley Crusher in an episode called The First Duty. Early in his career as a Starfleet cadet, Wesley is involved in the death of another cadet in a flying incident. The leader of their squadron encourages them all to lie in order to protect their Starfleet careers. What do you want us to do? Walk in there and tell them everything that happened? 
We might as well turn in our uniforms and start packing our bags. This is another moral quandary episode where Wesley has to choose between duty and self-preservation. If you can't find it within yourself to stand up and tell the truth about what happened, you don't deserve to wear that uniform. Trial episodes, again, something that Star Trek has always done well, and this is another that introduces a lot of conflict for our characters. I, Borg is an episode that uh, was interesting when the show started, but is now key to the current state of the franchise with the introduction of Star Trek Picard. This involves a Borg who is recovered by the Enterprise from a crash site and is cut off from the Borg Collective, then begins to develop individuality, something that the Borg do not have. You are Borg. You will assist us. I will not. And Captain Picard has to decide whether to protect this new Borg or to send him back to the Collective with a virus that could wipe out the entire species. This is one of my favorite moral questions to come up, particularly because it ties into Captain Picard's obsession with the Borg and the fact that he may not be making command decisions purely on morals, but that his own prejudices may be tainting what he decides to do. Because it's been given a name by a member of my crew doesn't mean it's not a Borg. Because it's young doesn't mean that it's innocent. It is what it is. And this idea of the Borg that is essentially split into two races, one that's part of a collective mind, and then a splinter group that have developed individuality is a really interesting way to take one of the best nemeses in all of Star Trek. This episode tops the list for a lot of people. It's an episode called The Inner Light. The Enterprise encounters a space probe, which knocks Captain Picard unconscious. He then lives an entire lifetime on another planet, where he's essentially been told that his entire life on the Enterprise was a dream. You think that this, your life, is a dream? This is not my life! This is a real spotlight piece for Patrick Stewart and for Captain Picard, and one of the best episodes of the series. We are reintroduced to the character of Montgomery Scott, Scotty, the ship's engineer, in the episode Relics. I ended up putting the show on the list because, yes, it does pay off a lot more if you've watched the original series, but it is a funny episode. What is it? It is... It is... It is green. When Scotty revisits the original bridge of the Enterprise, that's such an iconic set, I think that people, even if you haven't seen the show, you're going to understand where they are and the significance of that. Here's to you, lads. Yes, it's a lot of original series nostalgia, but there's a great core problem at the center of it, and there are a lot of funny moments, so ultimately I decided to include it on the list. Chain of Command Part 1 and Part 2, another great showcase for Patrick Stewart and his strength as an actor. Ah! Ah! Captain Picard is kidnapped by the Cardassians and tortured in a great guest star turn by David Warner, who also appeared in a number of Star Trek movies. There's a lot of other stuff going on here where the Enterprise is taken over by a new captain played by the great Ronnie Cox. Captain, we're all concerned about- Are you questioning my judgment, Commander? But largely here is this great showdown, this battle of wits between David Warner and Patrick Stewart, two wonderful actors engaging in psychological warfare and seeing which one will break free first. It's up to you. A life of ease, of reflection, and intellectual challenge. Or this. Captain Picard's backstory is explored in Tapestry, which is nominally a Q episode, but just as much a Picard episode. The captain is killed when his artificial heart is damaged, and he's given the chance to go back and prevent the actions which resulted in him having an artificial heart implanted in the first place. This explores the alternate timelines in the Star Trek universe, which I love. If you take all the risk out of your life, how does that change the person that you're going to become? And I like the meeker version of the captain. If you want to get ahead, you have to take chances, stand out in the crowd, get noticed. This is a great intersection of character work, of a good Q episode, of finding the backstory of a character and an alternate timeline slash alternate history. A lot of things that Star Trek The Next Generation does well all working together in one episode. Starship Mine is maybe the best action episode that the series produced. While the Enterprise is docked for routine maintenance, a group of terrorists boards the ship to try to mine dangerous materials from the ship itself. Captain Picard is on board and attempts to stop them, and we get a great cat and mouse game. I love that this shows how well Captain Picard knows the ship. He knows all the ins and outs and the little tricks. And for everyone that complains about the amount of action that Picard was doing in Star Trek First Contact, I would point them to this episode, which is the best that TNG shows both Captain Picard's capabilities as just an ass kicker and the show's capabilities as an action vehicle. 
Second Chances is one of the weirdest episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, and I almost didn't include it, but it is a great look at the Riker-Troy relationship. Commander Riker learns that many, many years ago, he was essentially split into two while beaming off of an alien planet. So we meet Riker's basically double, his twin, who renames himself Thomas Riker, but he's also an officer who was duplicated before Riker and Troy started to grow apart. So we see how angry, first of all, this version of Riker is essentially at himself and the conflict between Troy at potentially reigniting this relationship with a version of Riker that never left her. If he had gotten off the planet instead of me, don't you think he would have made the same choices that I made? So while the episode itself is a little odd, it's a great character conflict between these two, now three different people, because there's another Commander Riker just banging around the galaxy, probably literally. Timescape is a great sci-fi episode where Picard, Data, Geordi, and Commander Troy find the Enterprise basically in the midst of being destroyed in a battle with the Romulans and have to figure out what is going on as time continues to fast forward and rewind. I love how they play with time in this episode. There's a lot of really fun set pieces. I just like this as a great sci-fi episode of the show. Descent Part 1 was the end of Season 6, and Descent Part 2 was the beginning of the last season of TNG, Season 7. This is the culmination of the lore storyline, who is now taking control of a splinter cell of the Borg. So you have a great intersection of two of Star Trek's greatest villains. We also see Hugh reintroduced as Lore attempts to seduce Data, essentially over to his side, and succeeds briefly. The sons of Sung have joined together. And together, we will destroy the Federation. Season 7 actually didn't have a lot of memorable episodes, but there's a few that I do want to point out. Attached is a really key episode between Captain Picard and Dr. Crusher and their relationship. Why didn't you ever tell me you were in love with me? You were married to my best friend. This feeds into what we find out and what we see in the series finale. Parallels is one of my favorite episodes. Worf finds himself jumping through alternate dimensions. We basically see that there is an infinite number of versions of Worf of the Enterprise. And it's so cool to see these changes. Some of them small, some of them big. We won't go back. You don't know what it's like in our universe. The Federation's gone! The Borg is everywhere! I love how they do so many different things with the character of Worf and with the other characters on the show throughout this episode. The Pegasus returns Riker to his past and brings in his former captain, who's played by the great Terry O'Quinn. Riker's former ship, the Pegasus, has to be salvaged, and he has to decide whether to follow his former captain, now an admiral's orders, to cover up what happened or whether to come clean. You are still under my direct orders not to talk about what you know, and I expect you to follow those orders to the letter. I made you, mister, and I can break you just as easily. This is also a good Romulan episode, a great face-off between the Enterprise and the Romulans. It would be an awful shame. If your ship were damaged due to some misunderstanding, I am touched by your concern for my ship. It's a great example of how the next generation reinvented the conflict between the Romulans and the Federation. Lower Decks is a great late series episode that shows what happens to all of the nameless and faceless crew members scurrying around in the background when big things happen on the Enterprise. Well, don't you care what's happened to her? Of course. But we have to accept the fact that we're not always told about everything that happens aboard ship. They're making an animated series called Lower Decks that has this basic concept. I think that one's going to be a little bit more lighthearted than this episode. This episode is pretty heavy, but it really does stand out because it's great to see how the other people on the ship see these characters that we know, that we are acquainted with, and how it looks on the outside of a big crisis. Usually in the episode, we're there with the senior staff as they figure out what's going on. Here, we're left to guess along with these other crew members. And finally, there's the series finale, All Good Things, which finds Q putting Picard and humanity on trial once and for all. The trial never ended, Captain. We never reached a verdict. I think this is a great series finale because it figures out a way to revisit the past and the future of all these characters in a way that doesn't seem forced. It's such a great culmination of the show, of the themes that the series has established throughout its many years, and pays service to each and every one of its characters in a really great way. Although we have only been together for a short time, I know that you are the finest crew in the fleet. Yes, we know that we're going to see these characters very soon in their first film, but it's still an emotional and fitting send-off for a great TV show. 
So those are the ones that I have deemed essential. I'm sure that there are some that you are saying, how could that be on the list or how could that not be on the list? I thought the same way about a lot of it. I really was just trying to decide which ones can you watch beginning to end that will give you a full picture of what the show has to offer. Some honorable mentions that I didn't put in here, Hollow Pursuits, which is the Barkley holodeck episode. I look forward to your report, Mr. Broccoli. There's Future Imperfect, which shows Riker being thrown into a life that he doesn't know. Data, I haven't remembered a day for the last 16 years. There's Genesis, which is a silly but also kind of horror-esque show about the crew devolving into lower or previous forms of life. And then, of course, there is Sub Rosa, the Dr. Crusher Bones ghost episode where a ghost comes out of a lamp that was owned by her grandmother. It really is the worst episode of the series. You're not Nana. Nana's dead. Leave her alone! If you want to know everything else that the show had to offer, Sub Rosa really is, um, it's quite something. So that's my list for the essentials of Star Trek The Next Generation. What do you think of this list? Does it make you more interested? If you haven't watched TNG, do you think maybe you might want to jump in now? If you have watched TNG, I'm sure you're already yelling about how I could or couldn't put certain episodes on the list. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to get into even more of this craziness, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dan Merle. You'll get sneak peeks at uh, videos like this. Patrons at different levels also get a monthly Q&A, a monthly film commentary uh, a show called dan decides which is a patreon exclusive show for everybody on patreon that happens twice a month so much cool stuff and i want to thank these producer level patrons who have been such amazing supporters and help me keep things going i really appreciate their support and couldn't do a lot of what i do without their support and support of so many other people including you Thank you so much for watching this here on YouTube. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Should I do essential guides to other shows? Maybe Star Trek, the original series? Let me know what you'd like to see down below. And thanks for watching.